Two of the most important AI infrastructure companies, ServiceNow and Supermicro, have pulled back recently. Some investors think that it's a warning sign, and some think that the AI infrastructure trade is completely done. However, neither ServiceNow nor Supermicro is trading on hype. Wall Street is misunderstanding the fundamentals. In this video, I'm going to break down exactly what these companies do and the long-term earnings power, as well as what the market is misreading. And then I'm going to break down live the exact trade that I'm putting on on the trade platform to profit big in 2026. One thing I ask, one thing only, smash that like button for me down below. Really appreciate it. It helps get the video out to more people. You're certainly welcome to subscribe as well and join the free Discord linked in the pinned comment down below. I, you'll see all my trades that I put on each and every day during the week. Now, before discussing prices or targets, we've got to be looking through the right lens and have the right framework in mind. Now, these are not short-term momentum trades. They're not hype-driven AI bets. What are they? Well, core infrastructure layers, they're embedded in enterprise workflows and AI hardware, and they're positioned for multi-year adoption growth. Now, the real question isn't, why did they pull back? It's, has anything changed about their role in the AI stack or their ability to compound earnings? That's the framework that we should be concerned about going forward. All right, let's talk about ServiceNow. Now, ServiceNow did not sell off because of weak demand. ServiceNow sold off because expectations were extremely high and their past performance was extremely good. That's why their expectations were extremely high. Now, the key points, well, subscription revenue is still growing at 20% plus. Enterprise retention is very strong and platform adoption is expanding. AI is also being embedded directly into their customers' workflows, making their business extremely sticky. Now, yes, the guidance came in slightly below consensus, and FX created some noise. FX is just the foreign exchange, the dollars versus the euros and uh, other currencies. Now, AI adoption is deliberate, budgeted, and as I mentioned, sticky. So the pullbacks actually improve our entry points. So in the long term, that's good for us. All right, now Supermicro. They are a direct play on AI infrastructure scaling. Now, it's a volatile stock, and that's by design. Supermicro sits at the center of AI infrastructure demand. So GPU servers, rack scale systems, liquid cooling, and power dense architectures. The drivers behind recent weakness? Well, revenue timing shifts. Complex AI systems delayed deployment. Lumpy quarterly result results followed. Now, gross margin pressure. Product mix shifts and competitive pricing reduced near-term margin leverage. And they had cautious forward guidance. Management emphasized supply chain constraints, signaling near-term moderation. And finally, valuation, repricing, and rotation. The high beta AI exposure met capital rotation and the stability of the stock, well, it wasn't there. Now, the long-term trend remains intact. More AI equals more compute and more servers and more Supermicro. All right, let's talk about why both ServiceNow and Supermicro are down so much. They're just being punished. And here's the reasons. Well, ServiceNow, the guidance was slightly below ultra high expectations. We talked about the FX headwinds and the premium valuation created vulnerability to multiple compression. And then finally, the sector rotation pulled capital away from those high beta SaaS names like ServiceNow. Now with Supermicro, there was lumpy revenue, as we talked about, from the AI server deployments. And there was gross margin compression due to product mix shifts. And then forward guidance was conservative versus the hyper growth expectations that were expected on the last conference call. Now, it has a high valuation and capital rotation amplified selling as well. So these are the technical and 
sentiment-driven pullbacks. So they're not signals of broken fundamentals going forward this year. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think the market and Wall Street is missing about these two stocks? Here's what I think. AI adoption is expanding. It's not peaking. And enterprise automation and infrastructure remain early in the cycle. And number two, expectations reset without damaging the thesis. There's valuations that get adjusted. And with these two companies, the businesses are still very much intact. Now, number three, there's secular growth drivers, and they remain in place. Multi-cycle transformation in workflows and compute is happening right now. And then finally, pullbacks improve our forward risk reward profile. So these are just better entry points and fundamentals continue to compound going forward. So this is good. This is about process and positioning, not trying to predict what's going to happen in the short term. All right, guys, here we are on the Tasty Trade trading platform and brokerage, my favorite for trading options. There's a link down below. Check it out. It's my favorite for trading options, and there's benefits if you go through my link. All right, SMCI, we've got right up here. I've got, you can see, uh, four, five leaps on out 336 days to expiration and three calls that I sold against it. I actually just put on uh, one today uh, with the stock up 6.75%. So big move uh, today. But if we look at the chart, you can see it's uh, down quite a bit with the 50 below the 200 for the reasons that we talked about. So let's uh, jump on real quick. Let me show you Yahoo Finance right now on uh, Supermicro, you can see the five-year chart and you can see how it was up as high as 111. I think it's gonna be right back up there soon, as soon as they start beating earnings these, uh, you know, in the coming quarters of this year. And you can see right here, the one-year target is 47 from 31. That's a big jump that the analysts have on uh, for Supermicro right now. If you look at the statistics page, um, you can see the forward PE is 15 now, so good time to buy with it uh, down. And if we look at the numbers, take a look at the income statement, the revenue, $21.05 billion, and then uh, net income, 792. Now, this is what I use, 21.05, 792, shares outstanding. And then it comes up with a, a target one year of 37. And again, it's trading right now much lower than that at 31. But again, I think that is still too low. Um, but just based on the fundamentals, that's where it's at. Uh, if you want this uh, spreadsheet, go ahead and comment base case numbers down below and I'll uh, send it over to you for free. All right. Now, if we go to the analysis page for Supermicro, take a look. They did miss earnings the last couple of quarters for the reasons that we mentioned. However, the long-term revenue and earnings are intact. And most importantly, the growth, 47% expected next year. So let's jump back to the platform. And we can also look here on Tasty Trade. This is pretty nice. What I like about uh, Tasty Trade is you can look at the uh, right here, the income statement, and you can see revenue and net income increasing, and you can look quarterly or annually, and super strong balance sheet as well with assets and liabilities. And then being a uh, actually a uh, hardware company that, yeah, the margin's only 10%. The one I was going to show you on the margin is uh, the next one that we're going to talk about ServiceNow because it being a software company, it's got huge margins. But Supermicro is going to grow quite a bit growing uh, forward in 2026, in, in my opinion. Let me know down below what you think. But I would go right now and trade this with a poor man's covered call. So I'd go out to January, open that up, and then calls are on the left, puts are on the right. I would buy the 30 for $10. So one contract controls uh, 100 shares, so that's 10 times 100 or $1,000, basically. That's actually the mid-price right here. Now, what we can do is close that up, and we can sell a call against it. We've got earnings coming up, though. Uh, earnings is on 224. So I'm going to go out. In this case, I've already looked at the 35-day, which I would typically do, but we've got earnings after that, so I'm going to try to col collect some of the earnings. Uh, premium. So we can go all the way up to 38 and collect almost $2. So we can pay this off in under six months if we collected $2 every month. Um, and we can roll the, the short call as well monthly. But let's click on that and you'll see the price go down close to eight. 
There we go, 798. So you just hit return and or you hit review and send and place the trade. I've already got several of these on, as you can see. Now, if we go to service now, uh, what do I have on? I've got a put credit spread and then two leaps. I closed out my short calls because it's down so much right now. Look at that. And you can see there's support down here that it just broke through, which is not good in the 50. So everybody would think it's trending down. But again, because of the fundamentals, I love ServiceNow. I like their CEO. Let's go back to Yahoo Finance and take a look. Um, let me punch. Oh, I don't have it up. Okay, I'll punch it in real quick. ServiceNow. And then we can, we're can we on the summary page. So 219. So they've got a target $100 higher than where it is right now. And if you look at the chart, way down. This is a good time to buy. It's on sale. Um, and again, this whole AI deal uh, with software stocks, they're all getting hammered. So not just ServiceNow, but Adobe as well as uh, the other uh, SaaS companies uh, as well. So uh, good time to buy them. But again, I would look at the analysis uh right here and you can see they beat earnings the last four quarters in a row and revenue and earnings is uh increasing quarter over quarter and double digit growth 17 percent so uh to me a uh, great time to buy and uh service now right now so let's go on the trade platform and uh, again we can look now at the financials same situation uh, great income statement and balance sheet increasing, increasing. And then this one being a software company, almost 80% uh, margins. So excellent uh, uh, fundamentals. Technicals aren't so good right now, but hey, we're getting a bargain. That's that's the whole reason for doing this. I'm going to go out closest to 300 uh, to one year. So 365, open that up. I would buy maybe the 125 for 25 80 so 2500 bucks mid price is exactly 2500 so just like owning the stock outright you can go to curve mode i like this as well about the the platform um i've got other trades on but you can see as the stock price increases the option contract the deep in the money leaps also increases in price just like owning the stock outright so instead of paying 129 times 100 which would be $12,945, we're paying $2,500. Now, if we go to the table mode, what we can do is close that up. We can go out to February, 35 days. This is after earnings, so there should be decent premium. Oh yeah, there's real good premium on this. We can go out to the 140, so a uh, big move up from the 129. We can keep all that leaps profit as it increases up to 140, and if it doesn't, we keep all the the short call profit, but we can collect 350 and that's the 32 Delta, or we could go down to uh, 25, but uh, let me delete that. So watch $25. As soon as we click on that 140, it's going to subtract 350 from it. Boom. 2135. If we collect 300 bucks every month, we're paying that off in uh, six months, seven months, but we make money as well on the leaps as it moves up. So we hit review and send and place the trade. All right, guys, be sure and smash that like button down below for me if you haven't already and subscribe. Also join the free discord linked in the pin comment down below. There's a link and you join now it's free for life and there will be a monthly subscription charge coming up. So get in now. You can see all my uh, trades. I actually have one right here that I just shared uh, on Marvell, Poor Man's Covered Call. And I put the actual trade, the screenshot of the trade, as well as talk about exactly how it's structured and the catalyst going forward and why I put the trade on. So uh, others in the community can also share trades. And uh, here's the gains wins that uh, I have and uh, I just kind of outline those here in this particular uh, chat. And then here's where the others share their trades. Thank you uh, for sharing your trades, uh, everybody that has. And there's a chat here, was chatting uh, this morning uh, on a particular trade that uh, we just put on this morning as well. And then there's a stock option question. So free coaching, any question that you have, throw it in the question section and I'll be sure and answer that immediately. So with that, uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see in the upcoming videos and watch this next video.